theory behind it and examples of how to use it. Okay, so that's one excellent way of learning more about MATLAB because they give you these example codes. By trying to understand that, you will understand how to write your own functions and uh, the structure of uh, simple things like looking at it, for example, I not only learn about FFT, but I learn how to plot. How does a plot function work? How do I create a title for a plot? How do I put labels on these plots? So there are a lot of things that you can learn as you go along um, by looking at these snippets of codes. Now, the other feature is the so-called the demo feature, and you can type demo online in the command window. And it opens up basically the help menu, but there are lots of videos that are available. Like the video that I'm making, they have made lots of videos for explaining various parts of MATLAB. So uh, a keen student can then learn as much as you want by spending time and going through these videos and working out with an example uh, MATLAB session as you are watching these things. Um, so some of them are videos, some of them are just uh, uh, examples of uh, uh, text-based text examples. For example, this is a script-based example of how to do ma basic matrix operations. So you can just click on that and it's basically an M file, a script file that they have written with lots of comments on that. And that is something that you should be able to do when you're submitting your assignments as well, how to comment. So here, uh, how do you define a simple vector? How do you do operations? And there is no video of it, but it just explains to you in words and then shows you the command and shows you what the output uh, result of uh, such um, an action is. So we can learn a lot more about these things. So I wanted to show you about the help and the demo and then uh, yeah, the command history window is something that uh, you should also know because it keeps track of every command that you type and you can basically drag and drop that command if you want to reuse them or you want to edit them, edit part of it and then reuse it. Okay. You can also access these by the up arrow and the down arrow but in a sequential manner. Whereas from the command window, you can just drag and drop. <coughs> uh, the other feature, of course, is the scripting function. So if you go to this M file and double click on it, it will open an editor. And uh, this is a MATLAB editor, which allows you to write MATLAB functions. The MATLAB function should always begin with the keyword function. And then you should list all the outputs that it is going to produce equal to some name function name that you give and then all the inputs that it is going to take okay and then you define what the particular function does in this case the function produces a variable called t which is going to be your output so anything that appears on the left hand side must also be computed within the function that's the purpose of the function to compute that and send it out and then here you have a function called diag okay so if you don't know what it does you just go there and ask how diag Okay, so it will give you DIAG produces diagonal matrices and then you go through this and uh, look at some examples. Okay, so here what it does is it produces a diagonal matrix with ones on the diagonal. So that input D is used here. So it is going to go on the diagonal and uh, the diag produces the ones again. You ask for help on ones. It produces a vector or a matrix of ones. Okay, of a certain size. Okay, so if I say once 20, so it produces a 20 by 20 matrix. If I say 20 comma 1, oh, sorry, 20 comma 1, it'll produce uh, a column vector. So if I say 1 comma 20, for example, okay, my fingers, so there it is. Okay, so you could decipher and try to understand that. So this produces basically a matrix of ones of the required size n. Okay. And then I multiply it by d to make it the diagonal element. Now the diagonal element also produces off diagonal elements. There is one diagonal above or one diagonal below. And that is what I'm indicating by minus one and plus one. Minus one means it's below. So this is actually not one, that is L. That L appears there. Okay. And similarly this is U, the upper part. That appears in the plus one position that is above the diagonal element 
that comes from there. So all the inputs I have used, I've used L, D, U, and N on the right hand side of this expression to construct in one line, I could construct a tridiagonal matrix of any size having a specific numbers in the diagonal, above diagonal, and below diagonal. And that is really the power of uh, MATLAB to be able to write such functions and execute them. Once you save them into your directory and it is in the path, it will know about it. For example, if we change the path to another directory, okay, and then I say type for me TRIB, it will say it is not found. But the moment I switch it back to the path where it is found, okay, and that is now my current directory, then I re-execute the command and it finds it. Okay, so this is common a common problem the students will encounter. You write and you don't know where you save that function and you're trying to execute it and it doesn't execute. So you're getting frustrated. Okay, so you need to make sure that you have the current path where you're storing all the functions that you have written. I think that gives you a bit of what you need to know about um, MATLAB for doing your first assignment. The other thing I guess I should have pointed out is this command diary. Okay, so let's ask help on diary. Okay, so uh, <coughs> diary basically saves the text of a MATLAB session. A MATLAB session is when you start MATLAB and then you say diary log a1 for assignment one for example. Okay, so it will create a directory called log a1 immediately in your current folder and then whatever you type from that moment on for example a is equal to 4 and b is equal to 3 and c equals a times b sorry c equals a times b okay and then you say diary of it stops recording now you can go and look at that file it's a text file and it keeps a record of everything that you typed a equals 4 and then it is echoing that and you are saying b equal to 4 and it is echoing that and it even records all the mistakes that you make okay and you can of course edit it and polish it up if you want to submit that often that is the proof that you have done the work by yourself and i would request that you identify this file with something that is unique to you so that you don't copy it and give it so you may want to label it by simply logging into that diary file your name and things like that so let me stop at that point